Good day everyone, especially to our instructor, Ma'am Nichi Matasarge. To formally introduce myself, I am Mi Abdul from Section 2FC. And in this PowerPoint, I will be presenting and discussing a presentation on another profitability ratio, which is the BEP ratio rather. And in here, um, I will be tackling on the basic earning power or the BEP ratio. So without further ado, let's discuss about this one. So what is basic earning power ratio or the BEP ratio? Well, let me read you the um, definition well the basic earning power ratio or BEP is earnings before interest and taxes divided by total assets this ratio indicates the ability of the firm's assets to generate operating income so what does it means well from um, from the word itself basic earning power so if we are referring to uh, basic earning power, then probably we will be talking about the earning power. So what is this earning power all about? Well, we all know that earning power, it represents a company's ability to generate profits. And then earning power, it also compares a company's income to its total assets. And that will be um, what we're going to tackle in this discussion. So let's proceed to the next slide. So what is its purpose? The purpose of BEP or the basic earning power ratio is to determine how effectively a firm uses its assets to generate income. So why is it important for us to um, discuss or to learn basic earning power or the BEP ratio well it is for this reason that this ratio shows the raw earning power of the firm's assets before the influence of taxes and debt and it is useful when comparing firms with different debt and tax situations so in here it was clearly stated that through BEP ratio or through calculating the BEP ratio, we'll be able to know the raw earning power of the firm's asset. When we say raw, then it it does not include any deductions or it does not include any interest and taxes paid for the firm or the company. And to fully understand about this topic, let's um, take a class or let's learn about these key points that we need to remember throughout the discussion. So the first one is that the higher the BEP ratio, the more effective a company is at generating income from its asset. So what does it mean? So it means that if the BEP ratio, if the result in calculating the BEP ratio, since we will be tackling on how to compute the BEP ratio later, then let's just um, discuss about the overview about this one. So the higher the BEP ratio, the more effective a company is at generating income from its assets. So it states that if the result is higher compared to its industry average, then it suggests that that company is effective at generating income from its assets. And then the second key point is that using EBIT or earnings before interest and taxes instead of operating income, that the ratio considers all income earned by the company not just the income of the operating activity it's because through using the EBIT you are also using the value of the non-operating activity and through this it gives you a more complete picture of how the company makes money and then the next key point is that BEP is useful 
for comparing firms with different tax situations and different degrees of financial leverage. So what does it mean? We all know that if we are calculating the BEP or the basic earning power ratio, uh, we will be able to know how that company is generating its income from its asset so if we already know how to compute the BEP then we can compare its results or that company's BEP to another company in that way we will be able to know whether which company is effective at generating income from its asset through this we will be able to compare whether this company is more effective in generating income from its assets compared to this company which is not really effective in generating income from its asset and how do we know that well let's um let's go back to the first key point the higher the bep ratio the more effective a company is at generating its income and when we are comparing the bep of the two company or the two firms we will be able to know whether which one has the higher BEP ratio and whether the other one or the other firm is having a lower BEP ratio which means that it's not really an effective company in generating income from its assets and in that way the investors will be able to know whether which company they will be going to invest since we can clearly oversee whether that company is good at generating income from its asset or whether it is not. So, let's move on to the main point of this discussion. It is about calculations. So, the basic earning power or the BEP ratio is calculated using this formula. It is calculated by dividing operating income or EBIT by total assets. So, basic earning power is equal to EBIT over total assets. So, in this example, we already have a value. 283.8 million of dollars over or divided by 2,000 million of dollars. So, the big question is that where did we get this value? If we remember the current reporters, they are reporting about the allied food products. And in here, in getting the EBIT, we will be getting its value from the company's income statement. And in here, I will be presenting the company's income statement for us to fully understand this topic. So let's take a look at this Allied Food Products Income Statement. And in here, it was clearly stated about the EBIT value. So EBIT, here, it was clearly stated in here. Operating income or earnings before interest and taxes. So the value was already given. So where did we get that 283.8? In getting the EBIT, we need to subtract net sales minus the total operating costs. So, 3,000 million of dollars minus 2,716.2. If we were going to subtract that one, then we will get the value 283.8. And it was already labeled as EBIT, operating income or earnings before interest and taxes. So we already know where 283.8 comes from. Next is that where did we get the 2,000 millions of dollars value? So it is the total assets. And in getting that one, we need the um, balance sheet of the company. And we will be learning about that one. So in here, it was Allied Food Products uh, balance sheet. So in here, we'll be using the value at the year ended 2008. So in here, since it's just all about the total assets, then we will just get the value for the total assets. So it is 2,000 millions of dollars. So that's how we get the value 283.8 divided by 2,000. 
So if we will be going to divide that one, 283.8 millions of dollars divided by 2,000 millions of dollars, then the result would be 0 0.1419. So, but since we are getting the ratio, the BEP ratio, then we need to multiply that by 100. So, if we're going to multiply that 100, the result would be 14.19. But, since uh, we need to get the more exact amount, then uh, the value, the exact value, then we need to round it off. So, 14.19 or can be rounded up or rounded off to 14.2%. But the industry average for um, food products or for food industry company, the industry average is 18.0%. Since the result in computing the BEP ratio in this uh, allied food products company since its result is just 14.2% compared to the industry average which is 18.0% then that means that it has a lower turnover so let me explain it to you so since we already know that the higher the BEP ratio the more effective a company is at generating income from its assets but because of its low turnover ratios and poor profit margins and sales, Allied has a lower BEP ratio than the average food processing company. So what does it mean? You can say that Allied is not really effective in generating uh, income or generating profits from its assets. And that ends my discussion on the basic earning power or the BEP ratio. And I do hope that you learned something from uh, the presentation. Once again, I am Mia Okdal from Section 2 FC. Thank you for uh, listening and thank you for watching. And see you on my next video presentation. Good day. Bye-bye.